Power brings responsibility. But not everyone can handle the authority that comes with it. Police officers are meant to protect the public and ensure safety. While many honor their duty and risk their lives to fight crime, some choose the path of corruption. Sadly, corruption affects all professions, including law enforcement. In recent years, numerous officers have been exposed for abusing their power, harming innocents, and manipulating the system. Now, they face the consequences of their actions. In today's video, we're counting down the five most corrupt police officers who were exposed and are now serving time. Number 1. Michael Dotro Former Edison police officer Michael Dotro was sentenced to 20 years for arson and attempted murder after he set fire to the home of police captain Mark Anderko in May 2013. Dotro used two gasoline-filled jars to ignite the blaze, intending to kill Anderko. At the time, Anderko's wife, two children, and elderly mother were inside the house, but thankfully, none were injured, though the home was severely damaged. The attack came after Dotro had been ordered to undergo a psychological evaluation following his tenth complaint for excessive use of force. Just days after this evaluation, he carried out the arson. In addition to his 20-year sentence for attempted murder and aggravated arson, Dotro received 10 more years for official misconduct, 5 years for conspiracy to manipulate a witness, and 18 months for conspiracy to retaliate. All sentences are to be served concurrently. Dotro showed no remorse during his sentencing. His wife, Alicia, visibly upset in the courtroom, called him a manipulative monster. Dotro resigned from the police force following the trial and will be eligible for parole after serving 17 years. Number 2. Sergeant Wayne Jenkins Anyone familiar with the book or TV series We Own This City likely knows about Sergeant Wayne Jenkins and the corrupt Gun Trace Task Force. Once tasked with removing illegal guns from Baltimore's streets, Jenkins and his team resold stolen weapons, robbed drug dealers, and planted false evidence. In January 2018, Jenkins, at the age of 37, pleaded guilty to serious charges of robbery, racketeering, and violations of civil rights. U.S. District Judge Catherine sentenced him to 25 years in federal prison, rejecting his request for leniency, saying Jenkins acted like a drug dealer with a badge. Jenkins tearfully apologized in court, acknowledging his betrayal of Baltimore citizens. Jenkins's crimes, spanning seven years, included overtime fraud and contributing to the wrongful death of Albert Davis during a car chase. Other task force members, like Marcus Taylor and Daniel Hersel, were also convicted. Assistant U.S. Attorney Leo Wise described Jenkins' unit as a criminal gang that harmed Baltimore's black community immeasurably. Number 3. Roy Oliver Roy Oliver, a former police officer in Balk Springs, Texas, responded to a 911 call about underage drinking at a party on May 5, 2017. Upon arrival, he fired three shots at a vehicle, resulting in the death of 15-year-old Jordan Edwards, who was unarmed and seated in the passenger seat. Initially, police claimed the vehicle was backing aggressively toward them, but body camera footage revealed it was moving away. Following the incident, Oliver was fired after being placed on administrative leave. The Dallas County Police and District Attorney's Office launched an investigation, and charges were filed against him the same day. Oliver turned himself in and was released on a $300,000 bond. His trial began in August 2018, where he was found guilty of murder and sentenced to 15 years in prison. After an unsuccessful appeal, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals upheld the conviction in August 2020. Oliver will be eligible for parole in 2026. Number 4. Joseph Medanowski Joseph Medanowski is now 69, remains in prison after being labeled one of the most corrupt Chicago police officers. Convicted in 2001, he played a key role in a drug trafficking ring involving gang members 
and corrupt officers. During his 22-year career, Medanowski received 59 commendations for valor and drug busts, but secretly betrayed his department by providing the names of undercover officers to gangs and protecting illegal organizations. Medanowski was found guilty on 10 counts, including racketeering, conspiracy, extortion, and supplying ammunition to gang members. His actions led to the dissolution of Chicago's Gang Crimes Unit, and he was sentenced to life without parole. In 2020, Medanowski sought a sentence reduction under the First Step Act, but his request was denied in 2021. The judge noted that Medanowski had lived a double life, deceiving those around him and causing widespread harm. Despite his defense attorneys claiming he was simply unconventional, the jury convicted him and four co-defendants involved in the Miami to Chicago drug network. Number 5. Brian Tings and Devin Smith. Both these former police officers from Sharon Hill were charged in connection with the death of eight-year-old Fantability. In August 2021, after hearing nearby gunfire unrelated to a football game at Academy Park High School, three officers, including Tings and Smith, fired at a black Chevy Impala, mistakenly believing the shots came from the vehicle. Tragically, Fanta, who was in the crowd with her mother, was killed by the officer's gunfire. The men responsible for the initial gunfire were initially charged with Fanta's murder, but later accepted a plea deal, and the charges were dropped. The three officers were charged with reckless endangerment and involuntary manslaughter. As part of a plea deal, second-degree murder charges were dropped, with Fanta's family supporting the decision as an acknowledgement of the officer's wrongdoing. Each officer faces up to 20 years in prison for the lesser charges, with sentencing scheduled for January 2023. Fanta's family, represented by attorney Bruce Castor, plans to file a civil lawsuit after the criminal trial, pushing for more accountability and better training for Sharon Hill police officers. That wraps up today's video. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for future updates. Thank you for watching and see you next time.